everyone, so today I'm going to teach you guys how you can animate an album cover using Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. So if you want to know how, keep on watching. So the first step is we have to separate this cover into two layers. Just her, her body, and then the background layer. Make sure to duplicate your layers so you have two layers of the album cover. So I already have a PNG of this image um, of just of her body with the transparent background that I found for free online. But right now I'm going to show you how you can get it from the album cover. So once you're done selecting, you're going to want to make a mass of your selection and then double click your mass to go into your selection. And then you can clean it up using the tools. You can, use, you can smooth it out, um, add a feather, add some contrast. Just, you can just smooth it out however you like. So now we have to remove her from the background. So we're going to quick select her again, but then you have to inverse your selection and then make a mask again. So now we have to fill this background with something. So we're going to take a screenshot from the original album cover. So you're just going to hit sh Command Shift 4 on your keyboard if you're using a Mac and then drag to take as big a portion as you can from the original background. And then we're going to drag that photo onto the cover and then adjust the size to fit the background as much as possible. But we can't cover the edges of the Polaroid because we're going to have to take another picture of that. So now we're going to follow that same process, take a screenshot of the edges of the background. And then you're going to drag it onto your album cover and then just adjust the size to match all the empty spaces. So now I'm just going to adjust the background to my liking. I'm going to fix the height, fix the width so it looks less distorted. I want this tutorial to be beginner friendly so um, you'll see later in the video um, the background looks a little different because I added some gradient to it and try to make it look as close to the original album cover as possible. But I want this tutorial to be beginner friendly. So now I'm pretty pleased with how the background looks so um, I'm just going to toggle on and off um, my body layer and then my background layer to make sure I like how everything looks. And then I'm going to turn off the white background to make sure the grids are showing so I can export Ariana's body layer with a transparent background. And then I'm going to export the background layer so we can bring both, both of those layers into After Effects. So the next step I'm going to show you is actually animating the album cover in After Effects. So now we're in After Effects and I have um, three layers here, my body layer, background layer, and then the original album cover so I can toggle that on and off to make sure it matches. So the first step in animating her is we're going to make her blink. So you're going to duplicate um, her body layer. You can hit Command D on your keyboard to duplicate it. And then we're going to make her blink. This is a trick I learned from Naomi Edit. She has some of the most amazing Ariana Grande edits, so shout out to her. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make a mask of the top body layer. So you're going to want to hit the pen tool and then zoom in on the top layer and then make a mask under the eyelids. So just watch closely to what I'm doing. So I'm just going to click and drag and then click and drag to make the mask underneath the eyelids. So essentially the mask will help protect the eyelids underneath the eyelids from being um, distorted because when we distort the eyelids, the mask will help under the eyes look normal. So the pen tool may take some getting used to if you're a beginner, but if you watch some other tutorials on how to use the pen tool, you'll get it. It's just it takes some a little bit of time to get the curves to look just right, but you can always go back and adjust it. So next what we're going to do with the mask is add a feather so it blends in better. So you can just highlight both of them and then open up their settings and then you can add um, a feather of about two. So now we're going to actually make her blink. So we're going to make sure we have our bottom body layer selected, the layer that doesn't have the mask. And then we're going to search for the effect of liquify. And so you're going to want to have the brush tool selected and then you're going to want to resize the brush to get it to a good size that matches her eyelids. 
And then you're gonna wanna click and drag down on her eyelids. And you're gonna wanna drag down or a little bit angled to the side um, in the direction of where her eyelids will actually blink in this position. You're gonna wanna make sure it's not as distorted as possible and it looks like an actual closed eyelid. So now we're going to add keyframes to make the eyes open and close. So we're going to want to add a keyframe under distortion percentage on the timeline. And then you're going to want to move that keyframe to the right. Then you're going to want to add another keyframe of zero percentage and then have that at the front. And then you're going to want to add another keyframe at the end of the two keyframes for zero percent again. So they open, closed, and open. So the 100 percentage keyframe represents the eyes closed. And then for these keyframes, you're gonna wanna select them all and then right click and then add easy ease so it makes it look more lifelike. And then you can also go into the speed graph and adjust the keyframes and then make them go faster in the middle, make them go slower, which you're gonna see what I'm doing right now. Kinda of hard to explain, so just watch what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm liking how that looks. I'm going to just zoom out and then take a look at it again. And so I'm liking how that looks. So I'm going to copy and paste my keyframes down the timeline, however many times I want her to blink. So you can customize this to your liking. You can adjust the speed between um, certain keyframes. If you want her to blink faster, if you want her to keep her eyes closed, you can customize it however you want. So next what we have to do is combine the two body layers, the one with the mask and then the one with where she's blinking. So we're gonna select them both, right click, and then pre-compose them, and then you're gonna just rename it. And so this, this composition, we could always go back into it to adjust her eye blinks and everything, but we just had to combine it because we're gonna, that's how we're gonna animate her. We're gonna animate this composition. Now what we're gonna wanna do is, if you can still see her kind of peeking at the above the background um, Polaroid edges. So we're gonna wanna make a duplicate of the background layer. So you can hit Command D if you have a Mac to duplicate. Then drag it above um, Ariana and then Ariana's body composition layer. And then we're gonna wanna make a mess of just the bottom part. Make sure it's lined up. And there. So now, She's no longer peeking over top, and now she's hidden. So now we're gonna actually animate her body. So we're gonna use the puppet tool in After Effects. Um, the puppet pen tool, this is a tool you can use to animate pictures. And if you're a beginner in After Effects, it may seem intimidating at first, but trust me, you'll get it. So there's a lot of different options. There's a position pen tool, there's a bend pen tool, advanced. But I usually like to start off with a position pen tool. And then basically with the pen tool, what you're going to want to do is place pins on the body where you don't want her to move. But she'll only move if you manipulate the pins. So now that we have all our pins in place, you can hit U on your keyboard to pull up those keyframes. So it automatically creates keyframes when you add pins. And you can always go back and add pins later. But when you want to start animating those pins, be sure to move your timeline indicator. So I kinda I'm kind of i going to start off with moving her head. So I made sure to move my timeline indicator and then I'm just starting to play with it. I'm going to change this pin to bend because I want her head to rotate. So I'm just going to go in and rotate it and then it will automatically make a keyframe for me. And then I'm going to move my timeline, my timeline indicator at the beginning so I can look and see how that looks. And so yeah, there's her head moving. So I copied a keyframes, the keyframes at the beginning so her head can move back into its original position. So it rotates kind of back and forth. And if you want something simple like that, you can just copy those keyframes along the timeline and you'll have her head moving continuously. It may be easier to just go back and watch what I'm doing if this still confuses you. I'm, I know for some beginners it may be confusing at first, but if you just pay close attention, you'll understand what I'm saying. And then you're gonna wanna be sure to add easy ease to your um, keyframes cause that'll help it look more lifelike and more like body movements. And then you can always adjust um, how quickly or how slowly you want her to move. So now I'm going up and I want to make her hair kind of move down when she's tilting her head. 
like it would naturally do. So I'm just adjusting the position of this hairpin and then adjusting it downward so it can move down with it. And then now I just copied and pasted those keyframes so I could have a continuous movement. But if you don't want it to just continuously move, if you wanted to do some other stuff, then of course you can customize it to how you want. Your animation really relies on what the photo looks like. So it's, this photo kind of has some limited capabilities, but if it was a different album cover where some you could see their whole body, then you would have more opportunity for more animation. So this pretty much sums up how I animated the album cover. So you can even get more um, advanced with this. So if you want to change your puppet pin, if you want to get advanced, you can open it and minimize it and change the pin type to advanced and you can move the position and just get more creative with your animation. So I just added some keyframes and did something a little more, a little different, make her leaning forward a bit and you can just play with it and move it. So this is the final product. I just added a drop shadow to her to make her look more 3D and then added some film dust. You can see how the final animation sounds with the music on my channel page now. So this was my first tutorial, but the more I do these, the better I'll get. So I hope you guys learned something today. Comment down below any other tutorials and animations you want to see me do. And don't forget to subscribe and put the post notification bell on to never miss an upload. See you guys in my next video. Bye.